Hey guys, in this video, I'll be comparing Tom Platz and Danny Padilla from the 1981 Mr. Olympia. At the Olympia, Tom placed third and Danny placed fifth. However, I believe that either one of them, along with the other competitors in the top five, could have easily defeated Franco's underwhelming package. Before the video starts, if you want to continue seeing content just like this, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps support my channel. With that all being said, let's get into this video. The front double bicep shot is a really strong pose for both guys. This isn't the best picture for Tom, but you can clearly see that he has good arms with solid bicep peaks, decent lat flare, and by far the best quads. I'm not a big fan of his midsection, which, you know, in contrast, Danny presents a very good one. The vacuum he's pulling helps create a very good V-taper, and his lats flare out much more, which also helps the V-taper, and his arms look much more full and round. Moreover, while Tom does have him beat in the quads, Danny does present a great set of them too, and he does have good separation and size, but he obviously loses in that aspect. Although Tom does have a larger structure and better quads, I feel that his lower body kind of overpowers his upper half. Danny just looks so proportional, dry, and conditioned that I think I'd have to give him the edge, even though he is a much smaller guy. Here's the front lat spread, and unfortunately, neither picture is good for these guys. From what I can see though, Tom has a thick strided chest, solid arms and shoulders, a tight waistline, and good lats. Once again, the lower body is a no-brainer as Tom easily wins through sheer size. Danny does look really good though, and you know, he has an imposing upper body that is ripped and conditioned, but he doesn't fill out the pose quite as well. It is super hard to actually tell though guys, so based on these two pictures, I'd probably give Tom the edge as he has a larger frame and fills out the pose better. Here's the side chest, and before anyone says anything, they are about the same height because Tom bends down so far. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute, however you can clearly see just how good both men look. Danny looks outstanding, presenting ripped condition, a picturesque midsection, and great proportion. Tom has thick, dense muscularity featuring a great chest and, of course, a crazy side leg. Here's a second look at the side chest, and now both guys are hitting the pose in the same way. You can really see just how far Tom bends down. I mean, look how short he looks next to Roy Callender, guys. In the previous shot, Danny wasn't bending or tilting back nearly as much. However, in this variation, he appears to be even shorter. Regardless, though, he still presents the best conditioning between the two, especially through the side arm, and he has an equally impressive density in the chest. While Danny does look really good and impresses me a lot, I think Tom's side leg, coupled with his thick, dense muscularity, is, you know, just a little too much for, you know, Danny to handle here. I think Tom is winning this shot. However, Danny does look more aesthetic, in my opinion. The side tricep is a very good shot for these guys, and immediately I am drawn to Danny's tricep, which looks a whole lot better than Tom's. But I will tell you that Tom does have some faint striations through his, which look very impressive. Now the shoulders are comparable between the two, and their midsections look equally as aesthetic. Like always, the side leg is an utter domination for Tom. However, Danny does look very respectable through the hamstring. I think that both are very similar upstairs, so it kind of becomes a lower body battle, which we all know Tom wins. So for that reason, I'd have to give Tom the advantage in this pose. Here's the rear double, and wow guys, are those strided glutes that I see on these guys, that's insane. They both feature some incredible side leg development, especially considering the time period they were competing in. Now, Danny does appear to have some visible hamstring definition. However, Tom isn't even flexing his, so we wouldn't even be able to come to a solid conclusion. Both have incredible backs too. However, I am more impressed by Danny's. His back looks dry and almost granite-like, and his arms look more impressive on his smaller frame. I'd say that both have about the same sized back, so when the smaller man has the same sized back as the larger guy, it's going to look more impressive overall. Moreover, both men feature amazing calves, however, Danny does have the better forearms. From these two pictures, the lower halves look rather comparable, so I'd probably lean towards Danny in this pose. 
Here's the ab and thigh, and wow, guys, take a look at Tom's quad. The striations through practically all the heads of the quad, along with the well-defined and developed abs, is just amazing, and he looks absolutely flawless. Similarly, Danny presents a great set of abs too, but he kind of falls short when comparing his quads to Tom's. I'd say that Tom rather convincingly wins a point in this shot, as he looks really good in the midsection, and his quads, which are absolutely ahead of their time, utterly dominate in this pose. Here is the last pose of this comparison, the most muscular, and in it both men present ripped and dense muscle. Looking at Tom, his chest and shoulders are perfectly strided and thick, however his arms don't look nearly as impressive as his lower half. His quads look tremendous as always though, and overall he looks very good. Now I do really like the way that Danny strikes the shot as he clearly presents a better set of arms. His chest doesn't look nearly as thick as Tom's, probably due to the way he is hitting the shot, however he is clearly just as conditioned. Although both look very good and have their own strengths and weaknesses, I personally prefer Danny in this shot. I really like his large and conditioned arms and the overall presentation and the way he hits the pose. Tom does look great too, however his arms seem to be his downfall in my opinion. Alright guys, so that about does it for this comparison, and to summarize, I had Tom winning 4-3. I think there could definitely be a case made for different outcomes in the front double, the rear double, and the most muscular, so please let me know down below what you think about those shots. Personally, I prefer the aesthetics of Danny, however, it is undeniable that Tom had some of the best legs ever, and clearly was ahead of his time in that aspect. Overall, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please consider liking and subscribing if so, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.